The Texas Pardons Board is now investigating the charges against an Army sergeant convicted last week in the July 2020 killing of a Black Lives Matter protester. A jury found Sergeant Daniel Perry guilty of murdering Air Force veteran Garrett Foster. Perry says it was self-defense. He claims Foster pointed an AK-47 at him during chaotic George Floyd demonstrations in downtown Austin. Now, an eyewitness says Foster was pushing his fiance's wheelchair when he was fatally shot. At the center of this case is Texas's stand your ground law. Perry faces five years to life in prison. The pardons board is acting on calls from Republican Governor Greg Abbott, who tweeted this over the weekend. I'm working as swiftly as Texas law allows regarding the pardon of Sergeant Perry. Kaylee, something that I found interesting about this case is the use of the concept and phrase nullify by sort of both sides of this argument. So um, Abbott himself said Texas has one of the strongest stand your ground laws of self-defense that he said that cannot be nullified by a jury or a progressive district attorney. And then note that critics of his decision to analyze this say, well, you are seeking to nullify a jury's ruling and essentially prosecutorial discretion. What's it? Yeah, we see the power of prosecutors across this country. We saw it you know, last week with the indictment of a former president with DA Bragg here. We see it now with a George Soros backed prosecutor named Jose Garza, who decided to bring this case, even though the individual left the scene, he called 911, Austin PD investigated, and they said uh, that this was lawful self-defense. But leave it to Garza, who campaigned on prosecuting cops, to bring this case anyway. It's not just this case. He's also brought a case against 19 indicted officers, despite, again, the police department saying that uh, there, there's nothing to see here. And in fact, they accuse him, this is the Greater Austin Crime Commission, they accuse Garza of prejudicial past statements, withholding evidence from the grand jury, dysfunction, and he's been accused of withholding exculpatory evidence from the grand jury. So when you campaign to prosecute police and you're a rogue DA funded by George Soros, you get results like this. Mm -hmm. Ben. I think there's two things here that concern me. Number one, this is an individual that went out there, was working, serving his country, and try to make extra money, and then someone points an AK-47 at him. If a gun is pointed at you, and I've had that horrific experience, you're not thinking about an activist DA. You're thinking about saving your life. And when you have a firearm to protect yourself and you have to pull that trigger, it is not a fun moment. I've done it. It's miserable. The court cases that ensue, being threatened with your life in the courthouse, as I was, I was a, I was a target of a gang initiation in my hometown mm. of Memphis. Wow. When you go through that, and you get in the elevator and then they come after you and you know that there's a chance that you could have done something wrong. In the hours after that happened, I was treated like I was a criminal because they don't know what happened. Right. And I remember sitting there in that room at three in the morning by myself going, what's gonna happen in my life? Because you're like, should I pull the trigger? Obviously they were shooting at me. I felt like I could shoot back, but it starts playing with your head and your mind and you go through all that. And I can just tell you, I can't imagine being him knowing that someone pointed an AK-47 at you and you saved your life by shooting at them before they shot you. And then you call 911, you do the right thing. Same thing that I did. You go to the police. You tell them where you are. You tell them what happened. They say you're good. It's defense, right? You're okay. And a year later, an activist DA comes in and says, no, no, no. You're in the military. I'm going to go after you because you're in the military. This is a Black Lives Matter rally, so I get to check that box too. And I'm going to get reelected because this is about getting reelected. Yep. This is a liberal city in Texas where this gives you credibility with liberal voters on election day. And the fact that it happened at a, at a Black Lives Matter rally was all that mattered to this DA. If this would have happened on a random Tuesday, I promise you'd be a free man right now. But this was a double whammy. I get to nail a guy that wears a uniform hmm. and I get to claim that I'm a woke liberal and I'm gonna get reelected. I think, the, I think he should be pardoned. I think he spent far too much time in jail already. I think he should hug his mother again, his family again, as, me, as quickly as the governor can pull this off mm -hmm. because this is an abuse of power. Thank you so much for sharing that personal experience, Ben. I'm so sorry that happened to you. It, it, um, and it just blows so your mind when it happens. <laughs> And just so that we're clear for the facts here, uh, the victim was also an Air Force veteran, and also those are the events as alleged by then defendant. Uh, go ahead, yeah. Harris. You know, I am curious, um, and I'm so glad you're okay. I mean, that, that was sort of breathtaking moment for you to share that. Um, I'm curious though, what evidence is really needed? Y you were nervous, I'm assuming there were cameras because of the location where that was. 
um, a courthouse, I think you mentioned. Well, no, at the courthouse was when I was sitting there. And they take you downtown afterwards. Okay. And they treat okay. you like you could be, they're waiting for someone to show up at a, at a, at a hospital. Yep. Yeah. And, and they treat you like you're a criminal at that moment. So my question would be, what kind of evidence, um, before the governor jumps in, because that, that, that I'm, I'm concerned when you see a governor jump in, he can't adjudicate this case. Mm -hmm. And just want to make sure that he then doesn't get the ire <laughs> of the liberal on the left, DA. I mean, seriously, sure. because I think they're hungry enough, as, as we saw with a really weak case against the former President Trump, they're hungry enough to come for whomever they have to. So you want to retain your position of power in the state of Texas with stand your ground as a governor. So what evidence does there need to be, Emily? Do you think the video, do you, I mean, I, I'm curious. Yeah, I think this case perfectly illustrates a lot of factors that you discussed, um, but also exactly what evidence is needed. And keep in mind that depending on the state that you're in, there are some laws that essentially protect you from being prosecuted in the first place, which is what we're talking about. And then there are others that are in place that essentially are a defense, an adequate defense to um, a shooting, a, a, a charges of murder where you say, yes, however, it was justified. And so the prosecution proceeds with bringing that case and then you bring the Castle Doctrine in Florida, for example, that's what you bring up at trial. Um, but I think this also, Tammy, you know, sort of brings up as well the interplay that in the justice system, where do we err? Where do we want people to err? Do we want them to err on the side of, of innocence, err on the side of yeah. mercy? You know, what roles the governor and these pardons board plays? Um, do you trust more a jury of your peers or do you trust more that system, that scaffolding that we have in place for cases like this? Well, I think this is why governors have that power is because right. sometimes it, it ha somebody has to look at the pieces when you've got an activist DA, when you've yeah. got a police department that said the opposite, almost like the Supreme Court, when you've got competing ideas about what should have happened exactly. and where you have a Manhattan or that another liberal city where a jury is going to behave predictably, uh, then that's why this system works well with, with commutations or pardons or that person overlooking it. That's why we have this system. Yeah. And the reason I, I bring up whether or not he takes a hit politically or or even legally from a hungry DA is because of what we just saw with the former president, mm -hmm. you know, extending out from a misdemeanor into the lowest possible category of felony to go after Trump. Uh, who knows if, where that case is going to go? We don't even see them again all in court until December 4th. It could be a political delay, as we like to say. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but in this instance, I, I see something similar happening potentially down the road to challenge this law with the governor in the center of it. And what does that become? A shiny object politically in that state. Yeah. And remember Kyle Rittenhouse, you know, when you talked about evidence and cameras, right. that was a case that played out on national television. Um, and the amount of evidence was overwhelming in the form of videos and in the form of angles. Um, and the verdict was still absolutely demonized. You also had current President Biden weigh in on that, too. That's yeah, right. you did. Yeah, that's right.